flute player who's playing today has been influenced in some way by Marcel Louis all over the world. I learned from him as, as an example of what a musician could be. But it's Marcel Mouis. It's one of the fantastic qualities, it's the human part of it. Human and musical, they're just one. He uh, loved his flute, he loved his music, but he also loved his piano and he loved his pipe. In fact, he was the only musician I know who could play the flute and smoke a pipe at the same time, and during longer rests, sip a glass of piano also. His art is very human, and this I mean that he's not just purely a musician. He wants, in his music, to express what he loves in life. Uh, well, his Saint Amour is uh, one of the most important uh, things for him, that village where he was born, where he always went back, and that he idolizes. He quotes it all the time. I mean, he inspires his playing from that, uh, from what he loves in this village. He tries to have a, a sound that would uh, be like the blue of the sky, the green of the pastures. Uh, he tries to have the, the calm and the serenity that he finds in this nature. So there's a great parallel between the nature he loves and his music. Well, I really met Marcel Moïse before I was born because uh, my father heard his recording of the Mozart D major flute concerto, which was made during the 20s, but was released probably in this country in the 30s. And my father was just, uh, as everyone is, upon hearing Marcel Moïse for the first time, overcome, amazed, amazed that the flute could sound so beautiful and haunted by the sound. So the, this music stayed with him when his little daughter was born, me. Then later, when... Uh, I wanted to play an instrument. He thought, well, why not the flute? He speaks English partially in French, and so it took me a while, I think it does, any person meeting him for the first time to be able to understand really what he's talking about. He, and he uses so much imagery in his speech that also one has to learn about his particularly poetic way of expressing himself to begin to communicate with him. You have no idea to do this. He was not performing. He had already stopped performing by the time I started to study with him. He, however, would play a lot at that time at lessons. And um, he would play the same aria, for instance, if we were working on an aria from a, one of the French operas, which is, of course, is, has always been one of his most important teaching tools or, or um, Methods. I hate to even use that word. It's a passion, really, with him because of his idea of that the flute is really like an extension of the human voice. His approach to the flute is a vocal one. It's hard to be the son of a great man because it's almost cut your own personality and uh, you may accept it when you are 20 or 25 years old but when you got 60 and 65 and you have yourself something to say 
not only as a human being, but as an artist, but I feel I have something to say myself. It's very hard. I feel that Marcel Maurice is very much uh, a musician of, of human, uh, human feelings, human experience, and uh, for him the two are very much uh, linked together. And I, he means to be in his life uh, living according to the same ideal that he means to represent in music. When I met him, I think he really sincerely believed that there was one interpretation in music. And of course he had it. And his teachers had, had had it and they had given it to him. And he was passing it on to his students the best he could. And now I think uh, he tolerates the idea that other people might defer a little and yet have something valid. Thank you. 